Hello and welcome back. Vectorshift just added conversational nodes to their pipelines. And these nodes allow you to take full control over the conversation. So during any part of the workflow, you can add this talk node. And with the talk node, we can send text, images, cards, or carousels back to the user. Or with the listen node, we can wait for user input and then use the response at any point in our pipeline. In this video, we'll build a real-world use case using the conversation nodes. Here we have a customer support chatbot for a fictitious restaurant called the Oak and Barrel. Our chatbot will be able to answer questions from a custom knowledge base and make reservations as well. Let's have a look at this in action. When we start the chat, we will first receive this welcome message along with an image of our restaurant. Our assistant is asking for our name, so let's provide it as Leon, and it's asking us for our email. Of course, we can ask the user to provide any information we want, so this way we can get hold of the customer if we have to get more information from them. For the email, I'll enter leon at test.com. All right, so it's asking how can I assist you today? We have the option of making a reservation, but for now, let's actually ask a question about the restaurant. I actually have a question. All right, so it's asking how can I assist you? Let's ask... What are the current specials? And the assistant was able to answer this question from our very own knowledge base, which we can update very easily. We can continue asking questions or we can click on make a reservation. So let's do that now. And the assistant is saying that in order to assist you with your reservation, please could you provide the following information? Which date and time would you like to make the reservation? Let's say Monday. 2nd of June at 5 p.m. All right, how many people are in your party? Let's say five. Right, our assistant says, thank you, your reservation has been made. Is there anything else I can assist you with? So if we want, we could continue asking questions. But at this point, let's see if the reservation was made. And if I switch over to our Google Sheet, I can see the name of the person, their email address, which were collected at the start of the conversation, along with the date of the reservation and the party size. Now, let's have a look at building all of this from scratch. Of course, we will be using Vectorshift to build this, so go to vectorshift.ai and log into your account. Then from the Pipelines menu, click on New and click on Create Pipeline. Then let's click on Add your first node. Here we can build our standard pipelines, create a pipeline that's triggered from something that happens in an external system or a conversational pipeline, which is what we want to use. So let's click on conversational and this will give us the starting node. First, let's give our pipeline a name. I'll simply call this YouTube demo. And now we can start building this pipeline. You will notice in the nodes menu that we now have this chat option, which contains a talk and listen node. We can use the talk node to send messages to the user. So to start the conversation, it would make sense to send a welcome message to the user. We can also use this node to send things like images, cards, and carousels. Let's simply send a text message. And in the message box, let's enter, Hi there, welcome to the Oak and Barrel. Let's connect our start node with this welcome message. When we run this pipeline, you will instantly see that welcome message. Now, besides for sending this welcome message, I also want to send an image of the restaurant. So back in our pipeline, let's add another talk node. This time, let's select image, and I'm going to select an image of the restaurant from my PC. And then let's connect these two nodes. And now when we run the chat, let's restart the chat. We get our welcome message followed by that image. Cool. Now, I do want to collect some information from the user, like their name, and some way to contact them, like a phone number or their email address. So let's add another talk node, and let's send a message. And in this message, let's say, what is your name? I'm just going to connect this node to our message node. And now, after asking for the name, I do want to give the user the opportunity to enter some value. This is where the listen node comes in. We can use the listen node to capture some input from the user. This can be text 
or buttons. Let's select Capture, and this will now wait for the user to enter some text before the workflow will continue. Let's also connect these nodes, and I'm going to give this Capture node a name, like User underscore Name. This will make it easy to reference the value captured by this node further down in our pipeline. Now let's see this in action. When we run this pipeline, we of course get the welcome message, an image, and now it's asking us what is your name. Note that we are able to enter a value in this field now. And you might see this little loading spinner which indicates that this node is waiting for the user's input. Let's send this. And you can now see that this node has executed and the response contains the name of our user. Let's also collect the user's email address. So as with the name, let's add a talk node. Let's send a message and let's ask, what is your email address? Let's connect these nodes. Let's add a listen node. Let's select capture. I'm going to rename this to email address. Again, let's connect these nodes. And now we're able to collect the name and the email address of the user. And this is where the conversation can really begin. Let's add a talk node and let's select message. Let's say, thank you for providing this information. And let's add one more talk node. Let's select message. And now let's ask the user what they want to do. So let's say, how can I assist you today? Of course, let's connect these nodes. So we'll connect these two and we'll connect these two. And I think I'm actually going to move this thank you message up to here. So we've got this, how can I assist you node sitting in its own line? It doesn't really matter. It's just sort of a visual thing to make it easier to understand this workflow. Now, at this point, we want the user to either ask a question about the restaurant or make a reservation. Now, at this point, the user could either ask a question about the restaurant, in which case we need to answer the question from a knowledge base, or they can click a button to make a reservation. Let's start by adding the knowledge base, and then we'll do the reservation last. So what we're going to do is add the listen node, but this time, let's select button. And for the button, let's call it make a reservation. I'm also going to rename this node to human feedback. So this will allow the user to click on a button, but we can also enable this toggle to allow user message. I'm just going to connect these two nodes. And what you'll notice on the output is we've got this output for making a reservation and a fallback for the user message. I do want to mention that you can add additional buttons as well, but for this demo, let's simply go with this one button for making a reservation. So this means when a user sends a message, we want to take them down a very specific path related to answering questions from the knowledge base. Let's create that path now. First, let's add a talk node and let's add a message. Something like, do you have any specific questions about the oak and barrel? Then let's add a listen node and we'll listen for any text from the user. I'm going to connect these two nodes and I'm going to rename this one to user underscore message. Let's connect this user message path to this message node over here. Cool, so after the user sends their message, we want to reach out to a knowledge base to extract any related information from the knowledge base. So to do that, let's go to objects and let's add knowledge. This will give us the knowledge base reader. For the query, we'll simply use the user's message. So we can do that in a couple of ways. We could connect these two nodes like so. And on the search query, let's add double curly braces. Then let's select user message and response. And then we have to select our knowledge base. To create the knowledge base, simply click on create new knowledge base, give it a name like YouTube demo, and now you can add information to your knowledge base in many different ways. You can upload files, you could integrate with external sources or scrape websites. Let's upload a file. I've already uploaded this Q&A document related to my restaurant, but you can upload anything you want. And after a few seconds, your knowledge base will be updated with that information. And now we can go back to our pipeline 
And in our knowledge base reader, let's simply select the knowledge base that we just created. So what this will do is use the user's question to retrieve the most relevant information from our knowledge base. But now we have to use AI to actually formulate a response back to the user. So what we can do is click on AI and let's add the OpenAI node. Under system instructions, let's add the following prompt. You are a friendly customer support agent working for Oak and Barrel, a restaurant based in Cape Town. Answer the user's question using the provided context. Great, so this assigns a role to our large language model and within the prompt, we can provide any additional context. For example, we have to provide the user's question. So I can just type user question. Then we can refer to any variable within this pipeline by typing double curly braces. And this will bring up all the nodes. And what we want is the user's message dot response. Then for the context, we want to retrieve the information that was applied by the knowledge base. So let's type double curly braces. Let's select knowledge base dot chunks. Cool. So this is basically telling our agent that it needs to answer the user's question based on the context. And then we're simply telling it what the user's question was. And we're also including the chunks that were retrieved from this knowledge base reader. Let's also change the model to something else like GPT-40 mini, which is a super cheap and efficient model. Now this OpenAI node will use AI to formulate a response to the user. So all we have to do is send that message back to the user by using the chat node and let's add the talk node. Let's select message and for the message, let's select OpenAI.response. Cool, we should be able to test this already. So let's click on run. Let's restart the chat. Okay, let's enter my name. For the email, let's enter leon at test.com. And now you can see we do have this button to make a reservation, or we can type a message. Let's say, I have a question. All right, do you have any specific questions about the oaken barrel? And let's ask it, what are the current specials? And we get the correct response. And that is because we did indeed reach out to the knowledge base reader. So we can see it executed and our OpenAI node formulated this response. Cool. Now, unfortunately, the user can't do anything at this point. So we do want our assistant to ask the user if there's anything else they can help them with and then start the process over again. So to create this effect of starting the conversation again and running it in a loop, and in order to loop back, what we need to do is connect our message node, the one over here, to this initial node where we asked, how can I assist you today? So I'm just going to zoom out. Then let's connect this node to that initial node. Cool, the moment I did that, this new menu became available. So in here, we can change the text for any follow-up questions, like, is there anything else I can assist you with? So the first time this node is called, we'll get this message asking, how can I assist you today? Whenever we loop back to this node, it will show this message instead. Let's try that. So let's restart the chat. For the name, I'll enter John. For the email, let's do john at test.com. Then let's say, what are the specials? And we get the answer from the knowledge base. And now we are able to start this process again. So it's asking us, is there anything else we can assist you with? And now we have the choice to make a reservation or ask follow up questions. Now I am going to add one more note, which might not make a lot of sense at this stage, but it will make sense once we add the reservation node, because after we make the reservation, we also want to loop back to this node. And whenever you have multiple processes looping back to the same node, we do have to add a merge node to deal with that scenario. So I'm actually going to add the merge node at this point, just to save us some headaches going forward. So after we get this OpenAI response, I'm actually going to break this connection. And in nodes, I'm going to search for the merge node. Then under type, let's change this to any. For the function, we'll leave it on pick first. And then under path one, we want to wait until this node completes. In other words, message six. So let's select message six dot complete. 
And then it's this node that we will attach to this message node instead. Cool, now let's have a look at the reservation function. When a user clicks on the make a reservation button, we want to take them down this path. So let's go to chat, let's add the talk node, and let's select message. For the content of this message, let's say, in order to assist you with your reservation, please could you provide the following information. Let's also attach the output from this button to this node. Now we need the user to provide some information about this reservation, like the date and the party size. Let's add a talk node, let's select message, and let's say, which date and time would you like to make the reservation? We can connect these two nodes, and now we have to listen for the user's input. So let's select capture, let's connect these nodes, and I'm going to rename this node to reservation date. We also want the user to provide the reservation party size. So let's add a talk node, let's select message, let's connect these nodes, and let's say, how many people are in your party? Then let's add the listen node, let's select capture, we can connect these nodes, and rename this one to party size. Now that the user has provided all of this information, we want to add a record to some database. I'm simply using Google Sheets, so if you want to follow along, simply create a new Google Sheet with the following columns. The name, email, date, and party size. Then back in Vectorshift, let's click on Integrations, let's add Google Sheets, click on Add New Row, and then click on Connect to your Google account. I've already connected to my account, but all you have to do is click on Sign In with Google, and the rest is very simple to set up. Click on Next, click on Pick File, click on Reservations, select the sheet, and confirm selection. Vectorshift will automatically detect the columns in your sheet, like the name, email, date, and party size. So at this point, all we really have to do is select the values from the nodes in this pipeline. We can get username from the username node and response. We can get the email from the email address node dot response. We can get the date from the reservation date node dot response and party size. We can get from the party size node dot response. On the chat, let's add another talk message. And this one will simply thank the user for providing this information. So let's say, thank you, your reservation has been made. Now you're not able to connect the Google Sheet node to this, so let's simply grab the final capture node and attach that to this message. And finally, all we have to do is now attach this to our merge node. So to do that, let's add a new path and let's select this node, which is message 10. So let's say message 10, dot complete and that should actually be it let's run our pipeline so let's restart this chat and for the name i'll enter john for the email let's enter john at test.com let's make a reservation for the reservation date let's select 5 june at 6 pm for the party size let's do four and it's saying thank you your reservation has been made and it's looped back to the first node where it's asking, how can I assist you today? Let's have a look at our sheet. And here we can indeed see that John made a reservation for 5 June at 6 p.m. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more Vectorshift content. Also check out my other Vectorshift videos over here. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.